Welcome to this month's edition of the Home Cooking Newsletter. I'm Alice and this is Jeannie and we're delighted to be with you and this month we are celebrating the glory of traditional recipes. You know the kind we mean, those that you hand down through the family. They just stay with you for generations and we've got one for you today. Traditional what Jeannie? Well it's just basically the pot roast recipe. Mm -hmm. A few little tips but you know what's great about traditional cooking? is that when you pass it down, sometimes we have easier and more effective ways to get the same thing that oh, that's mom right. used to do. That's right. And that, you know, they didn't have a crock pot. No, no. So, so we'll, do a crock pot. we'll use this recipe with today's technology, but this is one you're going to want to keep. Right. So what are we doing here? Well, you know what? You can brown your meat or not brown your meat. That's totally up to you. But you brown it. Tell I us like why. to. I think it makes for a richer color. I think it's pretty. The gravy is prettier. I just I, and I think it kind of seals in the juices. And yes, and at our house, people fight over those crispy oh, yeah. pieces of meat. They're so good. And then, don't you think too that those little crispy pieces that fall off? We call it the goodness. Don't they make a better gravy? They are. And that's so something good. we're going to show you to do. We're going to, we're going to show you how to make a, a gravy from scratch using the, the pan drippings. Okay. So what do I do now? Are we well, going to put this in, put the, crock this in the crock pot? Let's just put this in the crock pot. So you browned it. Three to four pound roast. Okay. okay. So first you brown it. Yeah, well, if you want to, you don't have to. And the drippings we're going to save for gravy, correct? You bet. Okay. All right. Okay. Then, no. basically, it's one of those dump things, you know, where you oh, just kind of stick everything in. Really? A quarter of a cup of brown sugar. Okay. Now, you can make this, let me just tell you really quick. You could just use the onion and the Coke. The Coke breaks down the proteins, and it makes, the, makes it kind of like cooking wine, you know, does the same thing, only it's a different, a little different way to do it, but... Um, yeah, it just breaks it down so it makes it nice and flaky. That is a great idea. <clears throat> People have Coke. They don't always have cooking wine. I know. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. and then a package of the uh, onion Lipton soup mix, and that's really good for flavor and really good for the gravy, too. It doesn't have to be onion. <clears throat> it can be house brand. I mean, Lipton. It can be house brand. But what if I don't have that? Can I make my own? Yeah, we're going to include recipes for making uh, your own Lipton soup mix. Your own chili sauce. Okay. This one has chili sauce in it. Now remember, the chili sauce and, and the brown sugar are optional, but it sure is good. Oh, I wouldn't leave them okay. out. And we're going to show you how to, or we'll include a recipe anyway for making your own brown sugar. Right. Who knew? Okay. la di da di da And Here chili goes. sauce isn't hard to make either. So I just pour this on top of the, the brown sugar <laughs> on top of the meat, right? Alice, are you stronger than me? Maybe. I don't know. Let's <laughs> try. try. Well, hey, here's a hot tip. When you've got a jar you can't get a lid off of, take a knife, pop a hole in it, like I you just saw that. me do, and that, that releases the vacuum. Just all together there, guys. <laughs> People, Did you really do what I saw you do? You saw me do it. <laughs> this is supposed to... This is supposed to release. Well, and then the next thing we do, we run this under really hot water. <laughs> Can we have our cameraman help us? Do you care? Thank you. All right. Thank you, I'll David. I want you to know we made it loose, though. So. Yeah. We helped you. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead and, and just put that in there, too. Okay. And get a little spatula and scrape it all out. Okay. I mean, this is really, you just dump it all in. And you know what? We've got our timer going because we did something. Yes. We're, We're going to tell them about that. Some vegetables. Yeah, you're going to tell them about that too. Okay. You turn this on high for four to six hours, or on low for eight to ten. That's what I love about crock pot cooking. Yeah. <clears throat> All righty. That is nice. It is. Now I'm going to go get the, those vegetables I roasted. Okay. You know, Jeannie, the thing I like about what you're doing here is that if I have a lesser expensive cut of meat that's oh, pretty much point. tough, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and the lesser expensive ones tend to be tough, this is, this is going to soften it up and make it like it was flaky flaky and expensive. In fact, the more marbled it is, the more flaky it's going to be. Okay. Uh, this isn't a check roast. This is a sirloin sur tip, but it's good too. So why do you toast your or roast your well, vegetables? Well, I learned this little trick in England. And uh, basically, 
that just keeps them from getting all mushy. Oh. You know, and gives them a nice color. And, you know, roasting brings out the flavor of carrots and potatoes anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we just... Is that what we're going to do? Yeah. And if you're going to be gone, just do this. If you're going to be home, then I'd suggest doing it maybe an hour or maybe two before. That's what I was going to ask you. Can yeah. I do this just maybe an hour before dinner goes on the table? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, I can just dump this in. Because that way they'll look kind of pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Baby it. carrots roasted. Red red new potatoes roasted. Mm. You could do anything you want. Today you could put rutabagas in there like grandma mm -hmm. used to do. Mm -hmm. Parsnips. Mm -hmm. All that jazz. In fact, you know what I'd do? I think I'd even to uh, toss in some sweet potatoes and maybe a little bit of butternut squash cubes. Mm. Just for giggles. <laughs> See? Okay. okay. So there we go. Now, this is cooking. And it cooks, it cooks, it cooks. And then when you're done, and you're getting ready to bring dinner to the table, you make your gravy, right? Right. You pour off the drippings. You would hate to lose all that good All that goodness. Good flavor. Okay, and so we've done that. We have saved the drippings. Look at that, all that goodness in there, all that meat, those little flaky pieces, yum, yum. And we've got, we've got another pot of it here. Yeah, this was all the juice off of the crock pot. Mm -hmm. from, yeah, from the crock pot. We, we strained it. We had that light onion soup mix, and we strained it, but you don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to. No, huh? you don't have no. to. Okay. Now, let's, let's go to work. Okay. Now, I'll trade you places here. Get this out of the way. So, you bring the stove up to about medium. Yeah, that's about what I do, medium, okay. medium high. Now, I've got about maybe three tablespoons of flour here, and I've got a separate little bowl. And the reason I have, excuse me, Jeannie, mm -hmm. the reason I have a separate little bowl is because I'm going to take just a little bit of flour, and I'm going to take just a little bit of my liquid, my drippings. There's a, there's a nice bit of the meat fat in there, too. And, and see how rich that, that broth looks? It's beautiful. And I'm just going to kind of blend these together. Jeannie, will you add another teaspoon for me there? A couple, maybe. So maybe three teaspoons of flour total. But I put a, tea, a tablespoon of flour in a separate little bowl. And we're maybe adding three tablespoons well, I guess the broth. They put a lot of broth in there, then you don't have to worry about. The point is, though, you know, have you heard people talk about lumpy gravy? And of course, if you do get lumpy gravy, you can always put it in a blender and take or care of it, it, strain it. But this eliminates the lumps. If you'll mix some flour with your gravy drippings, your pan drippings, before before you start to mix. In other words, what I'm saying is, don't dump a bunch of flour in a pot of liquid. Mm -mm. Okay, you will get lumps for sure. Okay, no. okay, this is definitely just doing what we want it to do. Look at that! Woohoo! We're about ready to ring the chow bell here because this is this is just. Ooh, Alice, let me get a plate of meat and carrots and potatoes, and let's yeah. put some of that on there. You know, gravy covers a lot of sins, too, folks. If your meat comes out a little extra or a little too dry, you know, dribble, drizzle the gravy over it. Nobody will ever know. So, folks, there you go. Pot roast from scratch. It's a recipe you want to hand down. That is one traditional meal right there. An easy one, too, thanks to the crock pot. And... We've got our gravy from scratch. We'll pour this over our meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we were doing a nice dinner, obviously we'd put it in a gravy boat, but what the heck. There you go. A little on the meat. Oh, yes. I even like it on my carrots. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you know what else you could do that make this really kind of nice? Mm. <clears throat> if you were just serving on individual plates like that, Put a little, sprinkle a little parsley on top. Oh, nice. I love the garnish. 
That is so pretty, Jeannie. What's better than more gravy, though? No, there's nothing better. But I do have to say that I always try to have at least a cup of gravy left, if I possibly can, because later in the week, we would have roast beef stew. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the gravy makes a wonderful binder for the stew. So well, I, I try. I think that does it. That's it. Well, everybody, thanks for being with us. Send us your recipes or let us know what you think of this hand-me-down traditional recipe. Meanwhile, happy cooking.